just getting into the uh, valet situation now. Anyway, it's gonna be hopping into a 510 game as always, because that's what we're doing at the Commerce. Everything is about as usual as always, except finally my car's fixed, as you guys saw in the little montage earlier. It took forever. Thank you so much, man. Have a nice day. In the cup holder. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. So let's get inside. Let's get a session going. And uh, obviously, we'll let you know how everything goes. Okay, forget everything I just said. You guys can obviously read it from the title of the video, but we're playing 2040. This is a massive game. Did not expect to play this big, so they didn't bring it that much cash, to be quite honest. We'll make it work, though. We're going to hop in and uh, we're going to fight. The game's short-handed, though. I think there was like three or four people at the game, but the game looks good. There's like a bunch of recreationals at the table, which is a good sign. So if you're ever going to take a shot in a game, like I say, I played the Commerce enough to know who kind of like are the regs, obviously. This is a great game, so I'm going to hop right back in there. I shouldn't even be out here talking to you guys, but I'm waiting for my chips anyway. So let's get right into today's session. Well, today's game is none other than 20 freaking 40 this is a massive game and honestly i think the biggest game i've played here at the commerce casino this game's like usually either like private or for whatever reason like plo or no limit or honestly the game is just horrible and not worth me playing today that's not the case as i mentioned in the last clip so let's hop right into today's first hand and it's already starting off with a doozy the very first hand we're catching up a little late i decide to open the button with five seven of hearts to a hundred dollars the opponent from the big blind decides to make it the old three bet to 450 dollars falls back over to me we're playing four-handed i am in position and i'm the effective stack playing about five thousand ish dollars so i decide to make the call it is a bigger size three bet but i'm in position this can't be that bad the flop comes king 10 8 rainbow there is one heart out there and obviously we have a ton of backdoor equity not a whole lot of pairs or straight draws to go with on this flop, but let's see what happens. Things unfold pretty interesting when the three flop aggressor, the three better I might say, decides to do a really weird thing here and check. So at this point, I'm a little confused or a little bit lost to be quite honest. And the reason being is I'm just so used to aggression. But when he decides to check here, he either has like a super, super slow play, but more than likely, he has a hand like an ace -X wheel, or at least that's what I'm thinking at the moment. So after a little bit of pause, I realize that this is a good hand to go three streets with if I end up getting cold, and I can unload the rest of the clip on later streets, especially on some certain runouts. By him checking, he's giving me the green light to blast off, and I will abide by that. I decide to bet $300 around 30% of the pot, to which my opponent decides to fold. First hand in, really big pot. These pots are just babies compared to what you're going to see in the next couple hands. So let's keep this train on the tracks and go on to the next hand. Catching up here briefly, I'm in the big blind and it folds over to the small blind. We're currently playing four handed. So this is a pretty interesting dynamic. Obviously, we're never going to be chopping in this higher stakes games, especially because we're playing for time. Anyways, the person here from the small blind, who is definitely the recreational player, decides to raise it to $120 fairly standard here he's making it about 3x out of position i'm gonna go ahead and make the call here when i look down at 10 9 offsuit we're going off to a pretty favorable flop as it comes queen eight seven three hearts monotone board texture an unbelievably dynamic board texture to say the very least and my opponent looks down at his hand and usually what that means is that he has some sort of a flush draw or as it, at least he's thinking that Maybe I have something here, but when he decides to check, I'm happy to abide by those rules and check it back. The turn comes, the king of spades, as it does not help either one of our ranges, I don't believe so. The interesting thing here, though, is that my opponent decides to lead out for $300 over the size of the pot. As I mentioned, this is one of the recreational players. I'm not sure exactly what he's representing here. So when that's the case, I decide to make the call. We're going off to a river that comes a nine. Interesting because obviously we make a pair, but in all reality, this could be a pretty good board for my opponent to take the pot away from me. As we land on this river, a lot of things are going through my mind, especially when my opponent decides to lead out for $600. This is a really, really sick spot. And to be quite frank, these are really, really difficult decisions to make. I'm obviously expecting to win at a very low frequency, especially against these sizings. But the one thing that you have to keep in mind is by going fairly large on the two streets that my opponent did bet, 
he's now polarizing his range. And what we mean by that is he either has to have a very strong hand or a very weak hand. The weird thing about this hand is that he decided to delay C-bet. He didn't C-bet a board texture that could have been favorable for him. And if that's the case, I'm usually thinking that, you know, it's less likely for him to have flopped the flush. He's out of position, so there's no incentive on slow playing here, I don't think. So, I don't know. I just can't seem to be putting the story together that he's playing to me. The only annoying part is that I do only have third pair, and there is an opportunity where my opponent could be sick enough to churn a better nine into a bluff, like jack nine or ace nine. And if that's the case, it again just puts me in a really weird spot. Do I think my opponent's good enough to bluff with a hand like ace nine? Probably not. Is he gonna be betting this river with just a queen? Probably not. Can he ever do this with a hand that is only a one pair holding? Again, probably not. So with all of that being said, the only real value hand that I can put him on is either a flopped slow played nut flush or a rivered straight. And because I'm blocking the straights and because I'm holding a heart, I'm kind of in the middle, but I end up sticking it in. I put the hero call on. My opponent is hesitant to show, which could be a good sign. He ends up showing ace six offsuit for a complete air ball. Didn't even have a heart. Outstanding situation for us there. Happy to take that pot down. Without giving away too much information, I'm just going to let you guys know now. This session, the player pool decided to put me in a bunch of really tough spots. And we're just going to have to see how it ends up going. So in this next hand, we look down at King Jack of Hearts. I decide to raise here to $100. Only the big blind decides to make the call, which is that recreational we played against in the last hand. And we're going off to a beautiful flop that comes ace, ace, three. Uh, so, a little bit facetious there. I was joking a tad bit. Not an outstanding flop for us, but it is still good, and King High is definitely going to be the best hand. A very high frequency on this board texture. Not only that, my range is actually going to be hitting this board significantly more. So, when the opponent decides to check it through, I'm going to go ahead and take my showdown value at this point, or at least allow my opponent to blast off if he decides to. This is a hand where I'm pretty much always checking with the intention of calling pretty much any turn and any river bet without, you know, obviously the opponent going ridiculous like 3x pot or something, but that's pretty much my plan at this point. When we're off to a turn card that comes a deuce, he checks over to me once again, and like I mentioned in the previous spot, there's no reason to overplay my hand. I just want to take it down a showdown for its merits. And we're going off to a river that comes an eight of hearts. When the opponent decides to lead out for this river for $100, I don't have a really big decision here. I think that my opponent would be betting with bluffs with his eight highs or nine highs, you know, hands that'd be probably hitting this river, unless it's a specifically a hand like queen eight or king eight. I think most of these hands need to be betting as bluffs on the turn. When he decides to bet for that pretty small sizing, I end up looking him up with just king high. And my opponent is a little wary to show, so I end up not forcing him to show. Like I said, when there's a recreation at the table, there's no reason to like make them uncomfortable. Just do something. Obviously, he didn't like his hand. So I end up showing mine and it is in fact good. If you guys are enjoying the sessions, please do me the big solid by clicking the like button down below. You guys wouldn't even believe the big difference it makes in allowing this video to reach a wider audience. I appreciate you guys as always. Again, make sure to click the like button, subscribe and comment down below what you think my opponent had in that last hand. Alrighty folks, doing a quick mid-session update. The game, as you guys see, I've made a couple of pretty sick-ass calls, which is pretty outstanding. Now it's all about uh, continuing the energy. Let's see if I can keep it going. As you guys saw, you know, we're taking a shot, obviously, as we mentioned earlier. Now it's all about just taking advantage of the situation because we usually don't take shots like this. So if we're going to do it, we want to make the most that we can out of it. Anyways, the game's good right now. We're playing short-handed, like four or five-handed. Most of these hands have been, so it's time to head back in there and see how we do. As promised, we're getting right into that hand. We're in the button, and we look down at king-queen offsuit. Such a great hand to see. I decide to make it $100. It folds over to the big blind, who decides to three-bet to $450. Again, as we mentioned earlier, this is that stronger player that I do perceive to have a pretty strong and very theoretically sound three betting range. I'm gonna go ahead and make the flat call here considering I am in position, although I will add a small caveat. This hand in the off-suited variety, I think plays better as a four bet as opposed to a just flat. 
I'm going to give myself a slight pass because we are playing four or five handed or whatever at this point. So I can only beat myself up so much. So anyways, I decided to make the call and we're off to a flop. That comes ace, 10, four, rainbow. The opposition, as opposed to the last time, decides to see bet to $300. Obviously, this is a very good flop for his range, and he doesn't need to be going massive here. The only thing that he doesn't realize is that I do have some pretty strong equity in this hand. You know, there's a good chance that king high can still be good here, and I am drawing to what is obviously the nuts. There is no flush route there, so I don't have to worry about that. All of my outs are live. So... I decided to make the call for $300 and we're going off to a turn card that is a really interesting one as it comes the Ace of Hearts. It does now introduce a backdoor flush draw into the mix, but what it also does is make it less likely for my opponent to have a hand like an Ace. As now there are two of them accounted for, which leaves only two left in the deck somewhere. Anyways, my opponent is not stopping the betting shenanigans as he decides to lead out for $450 once again. He's double barreling me with his shotgun, and I'm kind of in between. Obviously, King High can still be a very strong hand in this situation. I have the nut no pair in these crossroads. So, after a little bit of thinking and considering I still have that gut shot as a back out, I decide to make the call. We're going off to a river that comes an absolute brick as it comes a five. The flush draws don't complete, nothing really changes here. So, when that's the case, I don't really know what to do, and especially when my opponent decides to lead out for, for $1,500. Damn. This is an unbelievably sick spot for me. I'm literally throwing up in my mouth. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you heard me gagging here. And I go deep into the tank, and these are the things that are going through my mind exactly at the table. Do I believe my opponent is capable of going for three streets of thin value with specifically a hand like Jack's? or queens, or kings, and I don't think he is. This is not a board texture that I would be doing that in my opinion, and of course you can, but I think on these runouts, you can only find two streets of value with those holdings, and if that's the case, I just have to discredit that, and it's even more unlikely because I block kings and queens. So now that leaves us with just holdings like any ace x, pocket jacks, and maybe some random 10. And in all likelihood, I just don't see an instance where this guy is going three streets with a 10, pocket jacks. The only hand that makes sense would be an ace. And if that's the case, he's pretty polar here. Although his bet sizing isn't absolutely polar, it's not like he went 2x the size of the pot. I kind of am fumbling with this. The big issue that I'm having with his line here is that he bet the river, and he bet all three streets, but he would also be doing this with a bricked flush draw. I'm not holding a flush card. I don't have a heart, and that's really, really important here. I think that if I'm going to be calling this river, I'd prefer not to have a heart. I think I'd be almost always folding if I held even one heart in my hand, because that just discounts a ton of the combinations of flush draws that he'd have on the turn that he'd continue to barrel with. So after all is said is done, and nearly three minutes into the tank, I end up putting my freaking chips in the middle, and I make one of the sickest calls of my life with king high in a massive pot. My opponent ends up showing queen seven offsuit for the absolute three, or actually four, barrel bluff -a -rooney. I am very proud to show my king high. And wow, what a freaking turn of events. Does that not deserve a subscribe or a like? That was freaking awesome. I really hope you guys enjoyed that. We still got some more hands to go over, so don't leave just yet. By this point, you guys have seen, I haven't been making a ton of hands. I've been put in countless ridiculously difficult situations, and I've ended up coming on top in most cases. Anyways, this is an interesting spot where the recreational decides to limp the button, folds over to me, I decide to check my option here with 9-6 offsuit. We're going off to a flop that is pretty decent as it comes 10-9-3 rainbow. I decide to check it over to my opponent who decides to see bet for $50. I'm going to go ahead and oblige for that sizing, half the size of the pot-ish. So I'm going to go ahead and make the call. We're going off to a turn card that is absolutely delicious as it comes a 6. It does introduce a backdoor flush draw. So when I decide to check it over to my opponent, and he bets pretty large here for $200, I don't think I can raise. If he chose a different sizing, I'd very much consider raising. 
but going near the size of the pot or even over so, I'm not really into the whole raising idea. So I just make the call and we're off to a river that comes pretty much the nut low as it comes in ace. Honestly, I don't see a ton of random aces that limp here that make two pair, but you never know. So I go ahead and check it over to my opponent who decides to bet $200 once again. Obviously never folding here, but not a great run out for my hand. I end up making the call and my opponent chose pocket kings. Unfortunately, we cracked his pocket kings are on the turn and he is unfortunately not having any of it as he decides to rack up for the night and he's had enough of getting bad beat. And I can't blame him. This has been a pretty tough session. Here we are in another pot where we look down at king queen offsuit from the plus one position. Our table is starting to fill up finally. I decide to raise it up here to a hundred dollars. Only the big blind decides to make the call. We're going off to a flop that comes ace king four with two diamonds and a spade. When the opposition decides to check it over to me, I don't mind just throwing out two big blinds. I don't need to be going fairly massive here. This is an unbelievably great board texture for my range. So I bet $80 to which my opponent pretty quickly decides to make the call. We're going off to a turn card that introduces a backdoor flush draw. That does now put two flush draws out there. When my opponent decides to check it over to me, I'm pretty in between just checking or betting. I think there is definitely some merit in both, but I do believe the better option is to bet again to charge those flush draws that are definitely out there, as well as the hands that are drawing that are like some gut shots or some random weaker kings. So I decide to bet $140 to which my opponent decides to make the call after a little bit of thinking. And again, we're going off to another river for the day that comes another ace on the river. Pretty interesting now, as I do believe that I have the best hand. And when my opponent eventually decides to check it to me, at this point, I'm in thin value mode. The only thing I can think about is the Mirage. Uh, it does not get carried away, but obviously I'm really liking my hand here. When he checks it over to me, I think it's time to go for a little bit of thin value. I decide to make it $260, targeting weaker kings and some middling pairs that just don't believe me. And after a pretty quick thought process, my opponent decides to call, to which I get the bad news, and he shows me ace three of hearts. So obviously we went a little too thin there. My opponent played it pretty perfectly. And uh, like I said, you can't win all of them. And obviously that's what just happened. I am really interested to know if you guys would ever consider going three streets for that in that situation that thin. I only did it because of that exact river card. Obviously, if it doesn't pair the ace, I'm pretty much checking back 100% of the time. But I am interested to know what you guys would do. Not everything is roses and daisies. And this next hand folds over to me in the small blind. We look down at queen seven of diamonds. I decide to raise it up here $130. The action is now on the big blind, who again is a very solid player. He does this thing where he goes into a long pause before inevitably deciding to three bet. He's done it every single time. Unfortunately, that is exactly what is on the menu for tonight. He decides to three bet here in position to $400. It's not a large price for me to call. The issue that is pretty prevalent here is that I'm going to be out of position against what I perceive to be the strongest player at the table. And if that's the case, I don't mind making what is kind of a tight lay down. I know queen seven is not a great hand, but... We're playing four-handed at this point, so it is kind of a tight lay down. But again, out of position against what I think is a pretty strong player. We're going to go ahead and have to make the fold here. Winding down at the last hand of the session, we find ourselves in a pretty awesome predicament in which one of the recreational players decides to limp here for middle position. We look down at pocket threes, and this is going to be good enough for me to isolate, especially when I look down at the button. That's a pretty awesome position to be in. An interesting situation occurs when the small blind decides to call out of that really poor position. I don't think he should be ever calling or just calling here unless he specifically has some kind of weak middling pair, but that's pretty easy to range. At least that's what I believe. He gets back over to that middle position limper. He decides to inevitably make the call, and we're going off to a flop that comes pretty nasty. King, four, three, monotone. All spades out there. Obviously we don't have a spade. And when the opponents decide to check it over to me, this is an interesting situation because sizing ends up being a very large factor. On board textures that are unbelievably dynamic like such, it's pretty important to start going on the bigger side. There's a ton of flush draws and a ton of straight draws out there for my opponents to have specifically middle position i think he's going to have more combinations of both flush draws and straight draws of course the small blind has some of those himself 
But when it checks over to me, I decide to bet $270. I don't want to scare my opponents away and bet $300. I think that'd be a little too scary for them. But uh, Small Blind decides to pretty instantly make the fold. And the middle position player thinks about it for a brief moment before, unfortunately, throwing his cards into the muck. Not the best outcome, but it could have been worse. You know, we could have not even hit a flush. But at the end of the day, I'm going to live with my decision. Pretty happy with the outcome of today's session, but it's about time we rack up as obviously the recreationals are leaving and all of the regs have got the phone calls that the game is juicy and there's new faces. And if that's the case, I'm not here to test my ego or my wits. I've played a pretty decent session today and I don't need to start battling against all these Euro pros. So I'm going to call it a night there. spot is always here at the valet anyways we have a little bit of talk about the session has come to a close um, first and foremost it was a pretty crazy session in the fact that I did not at all anticipate to be playing today especially not these stakes and again um, I'm only gonna hop into a game I feel comfortable in if I think the lineups is pretty soft there's no reason to go test my ego in a game that I have a small edge or maybe not even an edge but it's like a big game I'm gonna do my best to play in games where I feel like I'm strong and currently hitting back in the lab and studying and stuff, there's a lot to work on in my game, I think. I've let the game pass me by as I've been kind of stagnated in poker, to be quite honest. Anyways, we played pretty lights out today, and maybe it was a recent coaching session, or maybe it's just clearing my mind. To be honest, I came in with some pretty severe anxiety today, and I think we played well through it. I made some insane hero calls today. Also played a little weird in some other spots, a little passive, I think. And uh, you just got to learn how to battle and pick your battles, I think. Anyways, we were into today's game for 5300 and out of today's game for $5 shy of 8K. So for my math, that's almost a uh, $2,700 win, which is, again, I'm, I'm going to take that every day of the week. Not a lot, obviously, you know, with the size of the stakes that we played today, but it's good enough for me to feel pretty satisfied about. Anyways, I appreciate you guys always. Quickly let you guys know if you haven't already, make sure to drop your WSOP signups if you haven't already because that's coming to a close the airbnb is already booked there's a pool it's a great time again it's completely for free and uh, lastly yeah have a nice day enjoy yourselves stay happy stay healthy more importantly run good at the tables i'll see you guys soon deuces <laughs>